What's up, brand new experts, Arek here at Epic Design, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create and deliver logo files to your clients. So once the logo is finalized, then it's time to create a variety of logo files, Vector and Rust, and then deliver them as a logo package to your client. But there is a lot of confusion around what file formats should you create and in what size and so on. Because when it comes to using the logo properly, it is extremely important to have the right files. So your client will need the right logo files for everything from business cards, to social media, to signage, t-shirt embroidery, and so on. So as a logo designer, you need to take time to create all of these logo files to make sure that the logo you designed always looks good, no matter where it's being used. Now you need to provide your client with different files for use in both digital and print. So the package should include raster files like JPEGs, PNGs, and also vector files like EPS, SVG, PDS, and of course AI. Now multiply that by different logo lockups because we can have the whole signature or we can ju have just the word mark or we can have just the brand mark with or without the slogan and of course these files need to be saved in multiple color spaces like RGB, CMYK, Pantone and so on. Now if you are new to this channel and you want actionable tips on branding, strategy and design well then smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well. My name is Arek Dvorniczak and at eBay Design my mission is to help people build and design iconic brands. Okay so how to exactly know what kind of files should you deliver? Well, that's why I developed this guide to creating logo files in just six easy steps. And if you follow my guide, it will save your clients from using incorrect file formats and therefore making your logo look bad, pixelated, inconsistent colors, and so on. So if you follow my steps, you will ensure that your logo always looks good. Moreover, it will help you make the logo handover process a whole lot smoother and it will save you from clients coming back to you and asking for more files every time they need them. Okay, so here is my step-by-step -step process to making a logo package. So first of all, you need to set up a folder structure. So when it comes to creating logo files, you need to set up a structure first because this is how you're gonna organize all the logo files. Now, here is a breakdown of what should be inside the package. This is my logical structure to neatly organize all of the logo files. And of course, you can organize your files however you want, but I find this structure works best. So it helps my clients easily navigate through multiple file formats and quickly find whatever they need. So there are three levels of folders. First, logo variations. So different logo lockups and versions. For example, the whole signature, just the word mark, the brand mark. Second, color spaces. So here we're gonna categorize files for different use in both digital and print. RGB, CMY, Canon, Pantone, and so on. And three, color versions. So here we're gonna have multiple color versions of specific logo lockups. For example, full color, reverse, black, white and so on. So in the last level folder, this is where you're gonna save all the logo files to different formats like AI, SVG, EPS, PDF, PNG, JPEGs and so on. So besides creating a folder structure, it is also important to establish your file naming structure, the way you label the files. And naming files properly is not only a good practice, but it will also help everyone identify each file easily. And you will be able to use search tool as well. So this is how to name logo files. I always start with the company name first and then followed by the logo variation for example just the word mark and then the color space for example RGB, CMYK or Pantone and then we have the color versions at the end like full color reverse, solid black, and so on. And again, keeping things organized like that will save you from many headaches. And you and your client will be able to find the right file easily. So once you have your folder structure ready and you already know how to name your files properly, then it's time to prepare different variations of your logo. Okay, so in the second step in the process is to create logo variations. So when you consider all the different applications a logo can be used on, just one logo version definitely won't be enough. So what I mean by that is that we can have different versions of the same logo designed for use in certain situations. And the number of logo variations you need to prepare will depend on the design itself and the intended use. So if your logo is a combination mark, for example, meaning it includes both a word mark and a brand mark, perhaps they can be used separately as well. And in any case, you would probably want to create some kind of an icon that will serve as a visual shortcut. So it can be used in small sizes. And then you can also add a tagline or 
or some other descriptors and that's how you end up with different logo lockups. So the absolute minimum here would be to have the primary logo in horizontal orientation which can be used on the website for example but besides that you can have some kind of a brand mark that can be used in small sizes for example as a profile picture on social media. Now please know that there are different types of logos and therefore you can create many different logo lockups depending on your design. So it's also worth mentioning here that you should clearly specify on how and when to use each logo variation and this can be described in your star guide if you decide to go beyond just delivering your logo package. Now the third step in the process is to understand color spaces. So the next thing you want to do after preparing logo variations is to focus on different color spaces. So here you want to convert colors for use in both print and digital and not all clients know the difference between RGB, CMYK, Pantone and so on. So that's why I divide them into two categories print and digital. Check out the folder structure from step number one. But basically the easiest way to understand the difference between both is to remember that CMYK is used for print and this is about mixing four ink colors cyan, magenta, yellow and black to create your custom color. And CMYK is best for printing while RGB on the other hand is used for digital and therefore is not about ink but is about light source. So these plates emanate three basic colors red, green and blue that are being mixed to create your own custom color. Now we do that because if you don't and if you just go ahead and use RGB for print for example and vice versa then you're gonna end up with inconsistent colors. Okay so for example in your digital folder you're gonna have both raster and vector files in RGB color space and you might wonder why do I need vector files in digital folder? Well this is because if your client needs to resize the logo or export files to a different unusual extension then they have an editable file to work with and as a side note there is also a special vector file format SVG that is commonly used on websites. Next we do the same with the print folder so you just simply go and convert colors to CMYK gamut so that the logo can be used for print for example on business cards and of course you can find proper values manually but you can also use Photoshop to do the trick for you. Now RGB has a wider spectrum and therefore you will be able to achieve very bright saturated colors which is not always the case with CMYK. That's why you need to make sure that you specify on these colors properly so that wherever your client needs to use the logo the colors will always look good. And here is also worth mentioning that while CMYK version will be typically enough for most clients some of them will require Pantone version as well. So Pantone is for those clients for whom color accuracy in print really matters the most. So usually those clients who do heavy printing, packaging and so on. So now the step number four is to make logo color versions and this is because your client won't always use just the primary logo on a white background. That's why it's important to create a variety of different color options for your logo. So if the logo is going to be used on a dark background then you will probably need to invert these colors. If your client intends on using the logo on printed documents like for example black and white printing, faxing and so on they will also need a solid black version of that logo as well. So how many color variations of your logo should you generate? So similarly as with logo lockups depending on the logo design itself you may have more or less color versions. Disclaimer usually you will make color versions first which is step four and then you will save them to appropriate color spaces which is step three but for the purpose of this tutorial I reverse these steps to match the folder structure presented earlier in this video so it's more understandable. Okay so once you've done that then it's time to finally generate your logo files. So step number five is to generate file formats. Now up to this point you were basically just setting up artboards in Illustrator and converting these colors and so on but now it's time to actually export these logos into a variety of file formats and you won't have to do it manually one by one. So there are plenty of different file formats out there that you can give to your client. So here's my list of standard ones that will meet the majority of your client needs. So we have the AI which is the original vector editable file format of Illustrator and then we have EPS that was the standard vector file format other than AI but is now replaced by PDF. So now PDF became the universal vector file format but here remember to check off editable when exporting from Illustrator 
Illustrator. And then we also have SVG, which is best for website, which is basically vector for web. And then we also have the standard raster file format, JPEG, that can be used for digital in general. And lastly, we have PNG that is best if you need transparent background. Now, this list consists of both vector and raster file types. So let's quickly describe the difference between both so that you can use this information to educate your clients. So vector files like AI, EPS, PDF, and even SVG are basically scalable lossless file formats. So vector files are made up of basic geometric shapes such as points, lines, and curves. And the way it works is that the computer draws these lines and curves based on mathematical equations that these files consist of. So that's why you can scale them up infinitely without losing any quality. Now, this is not the case with raster files like PNG or JPEG. These are the opposite to vector files and they are not scalable. I mean, you can scale them up, but you will eventually start seeing pixels. And this is because raster files are made up of a whole bunch of pixels arranged on a static grid. And think of it as a mosaic of tiny colorful dots. So therefore they cannot be scaled up infinitely. And therefore, if you use raster files, then you should have them in appropriate resolution. And that brings us to talking about the size. What size should you save the logos to? So when it comes to vector files, it doesn't really matter because they can be scaled up infinitely anyways. However, when it comes to raster logo files, that's another story. You need to make sure that you have them in both higher and lower resolution. So I usually save all raster files as 600 pixels wide and then also 1200 pixels wide. So basically in this step, you simply go through the folder structure and you save those different logo variations in different color versions and to respective file formats. And remember here to keep things organized and stick to the naming structure presented earlier in this tutorial. So once you have generated all those files for your client, then it's time to put them on Dropbox and deliver that logo package to your client. Now, I don't recommend sending files by email in an attachment because things tend to get lost in the inbox and this can cause unnecessary frustration on both sides. And besides that, sometimes you just need to update these files or create new ones if needed and so on. So I put them on Dropbox and then I just generate the link for my client. So that way my client can download these files anytime they need it, but they can also generate links to specific files. So you might think that your job ends here, but this couldn't be further from the truth. This is because you must also educate your client on how to use these files properly. So remember that your client is not probably familiar with all the image file formats and when to use them and so on. So you can either include some kind of a quick guide that briefly outlines what each file format is for, or you can just simply have a conversation with your client and just show them how to use the right file format for you know, most common uses. And for that, you can use my description from step number five, where I explained on that. So this should give them some clarity on how to use their new logo effectively in all situations. Now let's wrap up with some conclusions. So the preparation of logo files is a very time consuming task that every logo designer needs to do. So creating all those different file formats is a monotonous, boring, and repetitive task that can take long hours. And then you can make mistakes and mess things up and you end up having to redo the whole thing. And that's why I recommend that you check out this free Illustrator script that is provided by the Logo Package Express. And if you do a lot of logo design work, then you can also check out the premium version of the Logo Package Express. And the premium one will give you a much greater control over the process. So this is arguably the the best investment that you can make as a logo designer because you just buy it once and then you can use it for every project. Use code ebeck 20 at checkout and you will get 20% off. Or simply find the link in the description to have the discount automatically applied. And if you want to go beyond delivering just the logo package, then you should check out my new product, the Brand Guidelines Kit, which is a comprehensive style guide template to help you deliver your logo design and identity work like a pro. Now I want to hear from you. How do you deliver your logo and identity work? Leave a comment below. And if you are a business owner who is looking for a custom logo, then just shoot me an email. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button and hit notification bell as well to let you know when we've got new videos coming out. Until next time, this was Arek Dvorniczak from eBay Design and I will see you in the next video.